Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was Ohio State Reformatory. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page. Are you ready to go? Whoa! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a good, a good episode of a good show. Let's uh, let's get into some of these cues. Yeah, let's go to Facebook first. Okay, fine. Adriana Verdeguer. She says, Ryan, are you okay, pal? You were acting a little mean to Shane. Perhaps you were scared? When I'm scared, I start to sing September. Maybe that'll help you. Great song, Earth, Wind & Fire, one of my favorite bands. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people were tweeting at me and like asking me this whole weekend, are, are we okay? Am I, am I angry at him? Do we hate each other? Uh, no, it's, it's, that's just how we talk to each other. That's just our report. You know what? Sometimes we're mean to each other and sometimes that makes me very sad. <laughs> now, look, look, you know, listen to me. You haven't been ghost hunting. You don't know what it's like, man. It's stressful. No, Sometimes, it's not. yeah, it is. <laughs> no. Oh, it's you, it's weighing on our souls. Our we we're, heavy is the burden of ghoul catching. And you know, sometimes you you get short with each other. That's just how it works. Also, we had been in Ohio for a very long time. That's true. We had been in Ohio for a long time. Your nerves are sort of hot. Uh, let's take it on over to Gramtown. Here's from You Can Do It. Hey Shane, why was the camera so close to your face when you went off on your own? My name's Shane. And I'd like to talk to you. It was very close. It was a bad angle. I think you even warned me. You were like, that camera's pretty close yeah, to your face. I said it made you look like Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. And you said, I don't care. I said I don't care, but... It was also like almost three or four o'clock in the morning at that point. I think it was four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I did not care. He did not care. Um, it's a particularly invasive shot. Uh, I guess in the future I'll try to Keep it out a little more. There's that. Or to lean into it, get it as close as you possibly can. Oh, just can. really just, just one eyeball, full just nostrils, just, or just two nostrils, and that's it. Full disclosure: our ghost cam rigs aren't the best. The best. No, they're pretty bad. They're very cobbled together. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we tie like a little rope around them to, to keep, keep them, them from <laughs> to bouncing them around up. too much. Do they have actual like rigs? That I'm sure they have professional rigs, but that maybe, would be, maybe we look into that next season. We're not professional. No, we're certainly not. Cassie Hall, uh, Facebook. I don't know why the cadence of that one was so weird. Cassie Hall, Facebook. Facebook. For Postmodern, there were two comments from the spirit box that I heard something different that honestly makes a little more sense. First, when Ryan hears Psycho, I heard Michael. Is that who was trying to contact you? Second, the board at dusk sounded more like, we're good boys, just trust. <laughs> Crank March saw that. What? What does it say? It sounds to me like it's saying we first board at dusk. Especially when it follows the word good, it's like they're trying, they tried saying it first and couldn't get through, so they tried it again. I like that as our, maybe that's our opening line with ghosts from now on. Spirits, we're good boys. Just, Just trust. trust. <laughs> Psycho. Psycho. Yeah, I think that actually kind of sounds like Michael. Okay, yeah, it sounds like either of them, sure. It sounds like either of them, sure. But yeah, you can go either way. Both of them kind of make sense in context with the conversation. <laughs> okay. I don't, I, I don't care about this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's why I'm putting you through it. The second one is the, the board at desk sentence. That's a full sentence, by the way, in the spirit it's box. It's a full sentence. It's a full sentence. Yeah, absolutely. Of the same voice. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. <laughs> Lily is fabulous. Shane. Sweetie, please don't invite ghosts to latch on to you. That's very dangerous. Also, you guys should come to Michigan. We have a couple, a couple of haunted locations too. Uh, don't tell me how to do my job. <laughs> if I want a ghost to latch on to me, I will invite it. Also, you know. He's invited many. Other ghost shows are always like, you can't do that, that's dangerous. The ghosts are gonna pull out your eyeballs. Whatever, I don't give a shit. That's what makes me, me. And I'm not gonna stop. Doing it. Just Until one me. of them does eventually pull your eyeballs out. Great, whatever. Then we got some proof. And That's true. And you'll be all the happier for it. This comes from Adi Borowski. Ryan, when you were doing the spirit box in James's cell, my mom and I both clearly heard a woman's voice saying, 
don't laugh at me, which Shane thought was Thermopylae. Thermopylae? Did you hear it and not want to say anything? Or did you just not hear it? P.S. Mom and I both love the show. Heart emoji, half Bugara, half Shaniac, hashtag picking sides is for squares. Hate to break it to you, but it's not. It's not. We've drawn the line in the sand. Yeah. Now you must choose which side you stand on. You can't stand on top of the line. Because then you're, you're making it like dirty. You're and dirtying the line. And I'd have to sand, do it again. It gets, all, it gets all muddled. You have to redraw it. Then you ruin it for everybody. Yeah, Thermopylae. Did I think it was Thermopylae? You said Thermopylae in the moment. Yeah. Don't laugh at me actually is possible. Okay. It's good that I have like a, like, a, like a catalog of all these in my head. I've stared at them for so long, I actually remember all of them. So many questions are about the spirit box now. Yeah, I know, I love it. I really don't. Also, another thing, another thing with the spirit box, and any of you who've done a spirit box session or have watched raw spirit box sessions, which I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining- raw stuff. I'm imagining some of you out there have done this. <laughs> Anyways. You guys gotta stick around for the raw stuff. The point, the well, point or... <laughs> shut up. The point of the story is, is that it's very hard to make out what it's saying sometimes real time in the moment, especially because you're in a location where it's kind of echoey. You don't have the microphone right next to it plugging, you know, with a, a direct line to your ear. So it's a little hard to make out what it's saying. A lot of times I won't figure it out until later when I'm able to, you know, analyze the audio. Uh, except for the ones that are very, very clear in the moment, like. But yeah, that, I, I, a lot of times it's tough to hear what the spirit box is saying live. So that's why I didn't uh, say anything in the moment. I heard what it, it had, it, I heard that it had said something, but I didn't really know what it had said. Shane said, Thermopylae. Uh, back to Gramtown, here's from Kenny Wen. Uh, hashtag fuck Shane. <laughs> Can, uh, some context would be great. That's my burner account. That's my Instagram <laughs> burner account, at Kenny.Wen. This is from Facebook, oh, from uh, Cindy Bourgeois. Bourgeois? 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 Cindy Bourgeois. Okay, so I find it hard to believe that Helen Gladke died accidentally by a gunshot to the chest, considering she lived at the prison. Don't you guys think that's odd? Great show, guys. And Shane, it was a good thing your nose was clean with that close-up shot. I shoved a few pipe cleaners up there beforehand. Uh, the, 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 we actually talked about that gunshot. Did we? The handgun hit the floor and discharged, shooting Helen in the chest. So the gun dropped, discharged. Oh yeah. And the odds of that actually happening, despite what movies would have you believe. Happens all the time in movies. Yeah, but it happens almost zero times in real life. It's very, very slim odds. And for that to discharge in a way that it hits her with a fatal wound, very, 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 very slim odds. There was reports that there was maybe some marital disputes going on between her and her husband. There was an article that I read that is I, that I consider somewhat of a reliable source that said that maybe the gunshot was a result of a dispute and not actually a gun falling out of a box and discharging. That's what I read. I don't know. I didn't really want to put it in the episode because it kind of because it because uh, it. Wait, is the implication that a ghost shot her? No, the implication oh. is that her husband shot okay. her. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't. I didn't want to put it in the episode because it kind of derails the episode. I'm also. It's also kind of just like a, like a claim. Can you imagine if ghosts had guns? That'd be sure. I guess. Yeah. I, like, would they have physical guns like in our world, or would they have like spirit? Would have a ghost gun? Which would shoot ghost bullets? Yeah, I think Like so. the Haunted Mansion? I think so, yeah. Would they have any effect on us? Would it be like kind of like Westworld where we could feel like the impact of the bullet but it doesn't really do anything? We're just like, oh, fuck. Oh. I feel like it would turn you into a ghost. Okay, that's a completely I guess, different- I guess regular guns can do that. That's true, a regular gun could turn you into a ghost. Yeah. So then a ghost gun would bring you back to life? turn a ghost back into, into a, a human? human. So if a ghost shot you, another ghost with its ghost gun, that it, person would suddenly wake up in a now physical body. Yeah. Fascinating. Oh well, right. great, that's all the questions. Uh, Ryan, did you enjoy this episode? Did you have a lot of fun there? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I also think that's funny that people thought I was particularly brave this episode because this epi this place rattled me the most, I would say, of the early half. You did seem like you had a little bee in your bonnet, I'll tell you. If anything, 
I was so scared, maybe I was like putting on my big boy pants to like, yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. like puff up my chest a little I'm bit. I'm not afraid. I'm not fucking afraid. Eat shit. <laughs> What's coming up this week on the show? I think, oh, this week is a very fun episode. We discuss a phenomenon that happened in a place in a desert. Oh. Uh, and it's a, you know, I'm just going to say it. It's an alien episode. We always do at least one or two of these. With? And there is a very special guest in this episode that uh, I think you're all gonna very much enjoy. I will say it was an honor. It was. To be in the company of this particular person. Well, anyways, that does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the next episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved on Friday and then send your questions in to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and the BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page and maybe you'll be on the next postmortem. Yeah. Yeah. Just take it away with your dumb shit. Wow, thank you, Because I'm not going <laughs> to even... Weekly Q&A. You're not going to gonna... fight it anymore. I'll give you the part of we call it a hot dog. A hot dog saga commissioned by and starring Ryan Steven Bergara as the venerable Dr. Gundis, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. A white void. Gross. Some time ago. A hot dog witch awakens. Her name is Pam. From the void, a voice. Bam! We didn't expect to see you here so soon. From the blinding light, a figure appears, an elderly crab, luminous, with like one of those cool hats that you can win at Six Flags. Who? I don't know, what kind of hat are you talking about? You know, like a, like a fucking cool wizard hat or something. You know the kind of hat. No, I don't. Who are you? Ha ha, oh bam. The question is, who am I? Y yes. I am he who you will never know, father of Gina and Marie, father of many things, in fact, protector of the light, etc. Where are we? Well, I haven't quite put that together yet. My guess is we've got some things to discuss, you and me. I, I don't have time for this. I've got, you've got what? Things to do? Matter of fact, I do, you appetizer. Well, before you run off to whatever you so urgently, uh, to whatever so urgently demands your attention, why don't you catch me up on where you are in the grand scheme of things? Ugh, fine. I murdered a bunch of assorted foodstuffs to appease the Dark Master because I'm a baller-ass witch who does stuff like that. Then I informed him of the prophecy fulfillment so he could summon his gauntlet of ultimate power. Or gup. Gup, gup, gup. Yeah, the gup. And then what? And then he... He pointed the gup at me and... And I was here. Oh, okay. We're both dead then. This is uh, for sure a place where we're both dead. What? Shut up. Nobody's got the condiments to kill a witch like me. Oh no, f we're for sure dead. I've been in here for years and I had no idea, but you telling me that story made me realize that my last memory was putting a goldfish in my mouth to make my children laugh. Then I choked to death. Then the Dark Master betrayed me? Oh, you're running with that guy? He sucks. Play shitty games, win shitty prizes, Pam. I killed my own sister and her husband and sort of their son in a roundabout way. All for nothing. Yeah, that, that's messed up. You know, I was so consumed with hate and anger that I lost sight of who I was, where I came from, the things I loved. Yeah, okay. Are you just like checked out of this conversation now? Yeah. What? Look, lady, I'm not some sage gatekeeper here to impart advice. I'm just a guy in a void. If you're so torn up about what you did to your fellow hot dogs, just get back in the game as a ghost. Oh, is that an option? Oh, for sure. But be warned, once you die as a ghost, you're done for good. You get one last stab at it, then it's lights out. It's sort of like reheating, reheating leftover fish. Uh, tight. So how do I, uh, crabra cadabra? The spirit gate appears. That's unforgivable. Just, it's unforgivable. just, uh, <laughs> it's unforgivable. just, uh, before you enter When this... you wrote that down, did you have any kind of like, I don't know if I should go with that. What? Crap or cadaver. Did That's you... a callback, Ryan. Is it? Oh, God. Yeah. Like season one. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe I pushed it to the recesses of the mind. The, the diehards will get it. The, yeah, the dog heads. Yeah. Just uh, before you enter the spirit gate, make sure you announce your intent and proclaim your spirit form. Uh, all right. Pam approaches the spirit door. I enter this door with the intent to right my wrongs, to aid those who I have harmed, and to defeat the evils I sought to unleash. Uh, to unleash. 
know why I said that wrong. <laughs> the world's had its fair share of the Dark Master. Maybe it's time for a little Pam. Pam enters the door, fade to white. That was a flashback to when Pam died, remember? Uh, now she's a ghost. I, I, it's all making sense. No, it's not. No, it's not. I think so. It, it never made sense. If you track it, it does make sense. If you sense. track it, you... I'm going to put this in a book someday, and I'm going to sell it, and it's going to be on the New York Times bestsellers list. What do you think about that? I think you'll buy it. Yes, I will. And that's it. Happy customer, folks. Five-star review. <laughs>